Hello everyone, this is Aline from the Experience Research Lab. Today I'll guide you through question scripting with Typeform. Honestly, I only started to know Typeform recently when I joined a startup funded by one of Indonesian state-owned enterprises. I initially asked about subscriptions to SurveyMonkey, which is considerably more affordable than SurveyGizmo and Qualtrics. But when the CEO offered me Typeform, I didn't mind learning the new stuff. So Typeform is Spanish online SaaS IS company specializing in online form building and online surveys. It offers dynamic forms based on users' needs. Since founded in 2012, Typeform has produced millions of forms monthly. Some of its happy customers are Apple, Airbnb, Uber, and Nike. The question is, what makes them happy? To answer the question, I visited the website and here is my first impression. It is simple with a proportional portion of white space and strikingly colorful visuals. It turns out that Typeform has three services. Uh, they are people-friendly forums, interactive video conversations, and no-code chatbot. But for today, I'll try to focus on the first one, the Typeform. The CEO has signed me up, so all I need to do is log in using my user ID and password. So I just click login here. And here is the user interface for the login user with the client name on the top left corner and the username on the top right here. Um, Typeform has two main terminologies. They are workspace and Typeform. Using more general terms, uh, they are like folder and file. So in one workspace, you can have several Typeforms. To create a new workspace, I just need to click on this button and type the name of the new workspace here. Uh, let's name it Experience Research Lab mm, Workspace and then click Create Workspace. Yeah, now I got my new workspace listed on the left pane here and therefore I can add members by email and define their role as either owner or creator. Let's type creator and then send invite. The next thing I can do is integrate uh, my type form with tens of apps, including Google Sheets, Slack, and Calendly. Whenever required, I can rename, leave, and even delete my workspace, but I'll not do anything with these options. So I'll just leave them as they are. With this button, I can also sort my type form uh, by date of created last updated or alphabetical order. I also have the option to see my type forms in a grid or in a list, but since I do not have any type forms created yet, uh, these options are not functional at this stage. So what I'll do is uh, click create type form. Currently, there are two options to create a new type form. Uh, they are by starting from scratch or using a template. If you are an experienced uh, quantitative researcher with extensive experience uh, scripting a survey, I highly recommend starting from scratch. However, if you are a beginner and for the sake of this tutorial, I'll go with the second option create a new type form using a template. So click use a template. Currently, there are almost 100 templates available for different purposes, including research and feedback. I'll do the demographic survey questionnaire and click preview. This template demographic survey questionnaire has seven questions with an estimate uh, of one to three minutes to answer the survey. To use the template, I click the button here, use this template. Subsequently, a message will pop up advising me to rename the type form because I create uh, from a template. So demographic survey, let's just do experience research lab survey. And divining what I am creating. It is a research survey and then click continue. It turns out that the new name is not safe yet. So is it a problem? Not at all. Whatever the reason, I can rename it anytime I want by pointing my cursor here 
and typing the new name. So the new name was Experience Research Lab Survey. Now let's discuss the first slide. As you can see here, this is a welcome screen, which is very important to introduce myself or the organization commissioning the survey and the objective I'm trying to achieve. Another essential information that I usually put here is the confidentiality statement, as hinted here, and the incentive arrangement, if any. Uh, I can instantly edit the message, uh, make it bold or italic, and even insert the link to uh, the website or relevant site. I can also display the estimated time to complete the survey and the number of submissions. Ideally, a survey should be no longer than 10 minutes. A shorter estimated time may encourage target respondents to participate. Therefore, I highly recommend activating these options, time to complete. However, I don't see any necessity of disclosing the number of participants submitting their responses. So I'll just leave this button inactive. Meanwhile, for the message printed on the button, I'll change it to Let's do it. Right. By the way, I can also add a media, image, video, or icon. And to do that, I can upload one from my local folder. So I just click this one first. Upload from my local folder whatever I have in my local folder uh, so click cancel or add an image video or icon or even those what I have uh, I have saved in my gallery especially for video here yeah. I can use videos from YouTube or Vimeo so for example and then click add with this I need to click add likewise uh, I also need to click add having selected an icon so let's go here for example go this and need to click add the next thing I can do is configure the layout I have six options here uh, I'll click on them one by one for you to see the difference. So this is the look with this option and the second option, third option on the left side, fourth option on the right side, full, full page, fifth option on the left side, full page, and the uh, last option is full page, the whole page. I'll go back to the first option, layout, but change the image with something related to music. So go music. I think I'll go with this. Further, I can edit the image by cropping, adjusting the brightness or con contrast, or even uh, add some filters, maybe with this, and click save. I can even add alt text to make it accessible to visually impaired respondents. So, did selective photograph of music notes, that's okay. and. Whatever change I did so far, Typeform automatically saves them. However, to ensure I'll click Publish. I can copy the updated link and share it with others. Now, let us continue to the next page, question 1. It is an MCQ. Or multiple choice question the question is about the length of study while the answer has five options at a glance there's nothing wrong with them however when I look into it more carefully it I find it quite ambiguous a and B are okay but C makes people confused uh, if they have been studying for two years they may choose 
B or C. Meanwhile, if it has been three years, the answer can be C or D. So to prevent respondents from confusion, I need to remove option C by clicking this uh, X button. Now I, I only have four options that, uh, left. The last option is OK, uh, but since A uses words instead of a symbol, I'll edit the last option to make them consistent. So uh, above four years, great. Currently, this question is not compulsory. It means that respondents can continue to the next one without answering. To prevent this from happening, I need to activate the require button here. As you can see, it now has an asterisk indicating that this is a compulsory question. Next question, question number two, uh, is a very simple question with only two options, full-time and part-time. It is not yet compulsory, so I'll activate this button as well. And Unlike the options for the first question, the order does not have any significance, therefore I can randomize them. By doing this, I tell type form to show full time in the first order for some respondents, while others see it in the second one. Question 3 is about age group. I don't see any source of confusion here, still there's something to improve. A is okay, but B and C are not really. Why? Because compared to the rest of the options, the age range is too narrow. So one year for option B and six year for option C. Meanwhile, all other options from D to H and even to I, eh, from D to H, have a nine year gap. To fix this, I'll combine B and C by first removing uh, option B and change this to from 18 to 16. Question 3 is compulsory, it means that everyone has to answer. So adding an option like I prefer not to say makes the setting useless. Therefore, I'll remove this option. And I will not do randomization because I don't want to get respondents lost. By keeping the options from the youngest 15 or younger to the oldest 75 or older, I can help them find the more suitable age group. The next question, question 4, is a drop-down question with 202 options. I never create such a long list, especially if the questions requiring recall or evaluation to prevent respondents from the so-called research fatigue, I'll limit the number to 10. That's the maximum. By the way, to remove an option, I can click here or edit choices. Select one that I want to remove and press Ctrl X. Meanwhile, to add an option, I can type anywhere I want and Afghanistan, click Save Choices. This question is already compulsory and I don't want to randomize the option. Instead, I want to sort it uh, in alphabetical order to make it easier for respondents to find the answer that is most suitable to them. So activate alphabetical order. Question 5 uses a rating to ask the number of people living in the household. It is pretty straightforward. To change the number of people living in the household, I can click here and change it to 3, 5, 9, or even 10. That's the maximum. If, for example, I want to change the question to ask about the level of satisfaction with the experience studying at the school, I can change the icon with uh, stars, hearts, and even thumbs up. But for now, I leave the question as is, so put it back to 7 uh, using the user's icon. Question 6 about means of transportation. It is a picture choice question. Well, it's a technically MCQ with pictures to visualize the options. Currently, there are 8 options. 
It says I can choose as many as I like, but it doesn't sound right because it implies that respondents can pick even those they have never used before. I think it better to rephrase the uh, instruction by saying, please select three means of transport that you most frequently use. By rephrasing the instruction, I help respondents focus on the only those that they have used before. Meanwhile, by limiting the options to three, I can expect to set a priority when it comes to recommendation later. This question is already compulsory with the label displayed for each icon. If I want to enlarge the size of the icon, I can activate the super size option, but let us leave them as they are for now. As previously mentioned, I want to limit the selection to 3, so what I'll do is click the drop-down menu here and select exact number and type it 3. I'll randomize the icons and add other options to capture information on all other means of transport not mentioned here. Similar to media discussed earlier, this icon may also come with alt text to make them accessible to visually impaired respondents. So, let's do it one by one. A walking, B bike, motorcycle, car, bus, Metro, train, airplane. The last question is similar to question number four, but here there are only 49 options listed in the drop down menu, uh, which is, are still too many, especially if the questions require no recall or evaluation. Anyway, I'll not make any change to this question, but make it compulsory and sort the options alphabetically. To wrap up, I'll add an end screen with a closing statement by clicking this button and typing my message here. I want them to share the link with anyone within the social network, so I'll leave the social share icons active. I also want them to learn more about the organization commissioning the survey by editing the button label. Uh, and change it to visit website. Or maybe visit our website. and activate the button link erlinsights.com now i'll click publish to save all the changes i've made and get the copy and paste it here click enter So this is the final look and feel of the survey I have just updated from the template. Let's do it. How long have you been studying here? If I click OK, there will be a warning saying that I need to fill this in. So I need to uh, select one option and I'll go with option A. Automatically the type from will lead me to the second uh, question. And do you feel, do you study full or part time? Because I told Typeform to randomize these options, uh, now I got a uh, part-time in the first row, so I'll go with this first option. How old are you, music lover? It's 16 to 24. And in which country were you born? If I click OK, again it will display a warning message. Please fill this in, so I need to break in this first before continuing. So, Indonesia. 
How many people, including yourself, live at home with you? Seven. And how do you get to our schools? Uh, I'll go with the motorcycle, bike, and something else that is not mentioned here. So I need to select other. And with this option, I need to type in my answer and manually. So skate and click this uh, button. I got three, but it doesn't automatically continue to the next uh, questions because I need to click OK. Uh, that's to say I need to uh, update my survey with a better instruction. Uh, anyway, this is the last question. Finally, which language do you feel most comfortable speaking? Even though I am, I was born in Indonesia, I feel most comfortable speaking English. So I'll type English. I'll select English and click submit. So there are two instructions that I need to add to my uh, survey. I also need to add the closing statement. So let's go back to the creation page. Uh, it turns out that these messages are repetitive because it says choose three here and then select three. Instead of repeating the message, I'd better change the instruction. Please click the button to continue. And then also please click the button to continue. Great. I feel like I want to add an image here. So what I'll do is clicking image or video, adding image. Students, I think. Students. Let's go with this. But I'll change this to this. Great. Now I click publish again to get the last copy and test it here again and this is the final look and feel of the survey I created using the template Skydome Music School demographic survey for us to apply for funding for the upcoming year we need to provide the local council with the demographics of our students would be great to get this funding so we can start a construction on our on our new performance hall. Will you help us by filling in a few totally anonymous questions? Let's do it. Under one year. Part time. Six into twenty four. Indonesia. Seven. 
uh, let's find the bike and the motorcycle and add skate here. Click the button to continue. Uh, select from the drop down menu and select the list. Click submit. That's it. Still, the message, the closing statement is not added yet, so I need to go back to the creation page and go to the last one okay and now i'll type in here do you know anyone who might be interested in taking this survey Visit our website, that's it, click publish. Let's do it. Under one year, part time, 16 to 24, Indonesia. Motorcycle, as you notice, know, this or randomized and skate. Click the button to continue, then select from drop down menu English. Click submit. Do you know anyone who might be interested in taking the survey? Please feel free to share if I click this. It will lead me to my Facebook page where I need to sign in using my email address or phone number and password. If I click uh, Twitter, it will lead me to my Twitter account where I have already logged in. Uh, and if I click LinkedIn, it will lead me to my LinkedIn page where I also need to sign in using my email and phone and password. Uh, meanwhile, if I click visit our website, it will lead me to my uh, page, uh, Experience Research Lab page. So next time I'll show you how to add other question types such as open-ended questions with long and short text, opinion scales, net promoter scores, matrix, and question groups. But today I'll leave you here. Thank you for being with me. For more insights into research, secondary or primary, qualitative or quantitative, please subscribe and visit our website. Listen and watch our content. They are available in text, audio, and audiovisual formats. See you in the other videos. Cheers.